Hey, hey, fellow YouTubers, JJ the Trucker coming to you from Lincoln, Nebraska. I just wanted to uh, come on in here and give you guys the uh, the weekly update. Sorry for the lighting. It's uh, it's nighttime out. I'm at uh, Wally World once again, uh, and uh, yeah, different lighting than the uh, than the Freightliner had. Uh, Freightliner had uh, the lighting kind of in front. This uh, has lighting off to the side, so uh, just a little different, but uh, it's all right. I'm not planning on doing a lot of videos these way uh, this way at night. In fact, I was planning, uh, if you guys uh, saw earlier, I was planning on doing a live, you know, uh, have a 30, you know, take 30 with JJ, uh, JJ. and uh, it didn't work out. Um, you know, I stopped for my 30, started up the live, and I'm going, I'm talking, I'm just waiting for people to join, and I'm waiting, and I'm talking, and, you know, long time's going by, I'm like, why isn't anybody joined yet, what the heck? And uh, I started, uh, you know, through my tablet looking at the uh, the at comments and stuff uh, to that post, and uh, yeah, people weren't able to join uh, for some reason. So I don't know what was going on, maybe with YouTube or something like that. But uh, it is what it is. Uh, so bummer, that time was wasted. Uh, but I, you know, I, I had to hit the road, so I wanted, you know, while I parked, to get out a quick update on what's going on. And uh, while I'm at it. I also want to answer a couple of questions that have come along. Uh, something else I want to try uh, new for you guys, question of the week. Uh, and I've got two questions of the week that I want to get answered. Uh, so first for the update, man, it's, uh, you know, you guys saw that I, uh, you know, pretty much went across this country all the way to Pennsylvania, uh, which was, uh, it was a nice drive, except, um, or I was going to Grand Michigan, or uh, yeah, Grand Rapids, Michigan, but I ran out of hours. You guys saw that. Uh, I was bummed out about that because that was a good load. Uh, and I was thinking, okay, I'll probably I'll go ahead and take a 34-hour reset. Ended up not doing that. Uh, instead of having the full day off, right around 5 o'clock, my uh, fleet manager uh, sends me a, a message for a pickup the following day. I'm like, okay, well, it's still the following day. But I had to go way out of the way, uh, bobtail, uh, not deadhead, but actual bobtail to pick up a trailer. I thought I'd be able to pick up a trailer uh, right there at the Walmart distribution center that was right up the street. Turns out that wasn't the case. I had to go way down to a uh, uh, Cabela's uh, or Bass Pro Shop to do that. And uh, so that, that, because of having to do that, <clears throat> I actually had to leave that night uh, or that evening, head on down there, get the trailer, camp out overnight there, and then start my drive. So I didn't get to 34. However, there were enough you know, hours left in that day to get that trailer, and I've got really good recaps uh, that have been coming back because of running hard at the beginning of the week. So, wasn't a big deal. I'm doing all right running on recaps. Made that you know, uh, made that uh, pickup, made that made a delivery, uh, and then ended up picking up a load from Hershey, Pennsylvania. Yeah, chocolate baby. Uh, this thing. This load's got me uh, fully loaded, uh, 42,000 in the box, so almost fully loaded. Uh, I can take about 45,000, I think. Uh, that should be around 45,000. So I've got 42,000 heavy load from Pennsylvania. This was the perfect opportunity to measure the fuel mileage. Uh, I will say all the fuel mileage readings that I've been doing manually have matched up to the, uh, the panel, uh, the driver information panel, the dashboard panel measuring up to it darn near perfect uh, the panel does not uh, take into account any fuel used up by the APU you got to keep that in mind um, what I really do like about the uh, the information panel though is it actually tells you uh, in the trip meters a full breakdown summary much more detailed than the uh, than the Freightliner although it's much harder to get to and you can't get to it while you're driving uh, that's kind of a bummer but the detail is a lot better including exactly how many gallons of fuel you've used that's pretty nice um <clears throat> since i've already measured uh done you know the, the measurements to make sure that the mileage counter is correct the speedometer is correct uh, i know that it's calculating the mileage portion correctly next is is it calculating the fuel usage correctly and yes it is if it says i used up 75 gallons you know and i go to fill it up it's taken about 77 gallons or so, which means a couple gallons used by the APU, which is about typical. Uh, so overall, not too bad. It's it's working out. And now the fuel mileage. All right, my first load that I took out of the yard 
uh, heading on up to Washington. That fuel mileage was pretty low. Uh, that was in, I think, the low sevens, high sixes, low sevens, if I remember. But that was also going through 90, okay, Highway 90, which is a lot of mountains and hills. Uh, you know, you know, it wasn't a, a heavy load, but it was definitely a lot of hills, mountains, and I had an old trailer, no tails, uh, a 16 series, you know, so that's a four-year-old trailer, and uh, <clears throat> those things, you know, they, they just don't have as good a fuel mileage as the newer ones. The next load I picked up had a newer trailer, and I took 94, and the, and the fuel mileage greatly improved. Uh, right now, coming from Pennsylvania, through the mountains there uh, along 74, uh, Highway 74, uh, and then you know through I took uh, 70 uh, on up through Kansas City and on up. <clears throat> so that trip all the way up to Nebraska. So far, I'm at 8.8 .8 miles per gallon. That is incredible. That is absolutely fantastic with the weight. I do have a. Uh, it's uh, I think I've got an 18 series trailer, so it's kind of middle of the road there. Uh, it does have tails. It's got the big, those big black tails. Uh, so that definitely helps out. Uh, it's got the wings and all that stuff, uh, or skirts. So, so far, yeah, I guess fuel mileage has been actually pretty good, a lot better than I was anticipating, which is, uh, which is good. I'll keep track on it. Uh, I'll see how it goes. So, hey, this might, this may be a good thing. Um, let's see. So, yeah, I am heading. Oh, yeah, this uh, load of chocolate is heading on over to Utah, um, where I'll be dropping it. And then I don't know if they're going to have me do another quick load or not, or if I'm just going to go ahead and Bob Taylor Deadhead up to uh, Boise, Idaho. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, because my little sister is getting married. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, marriage that's in about a week from now. Uh, so I may not have a next Sunday update. I might slip one out later at night. We'll, we'll see how it goes. I might do one from the wedding. Shh, don't tell my sister. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that's what's going on. So I want to make sure I, I get there in time for, uh, you know, all the festivities and everything like that. But we have plenty of time. Wedding's not for a week. Um, I want to get there by a Saturday, maybe Friday if possible. Uh, one thing I can tell you is challenging being on the road all the time wedding clothes you know I, I don't have anything to wear for a wedding you know so all right I you know go shopping also not the easiest thing to do you know go shopping while you're uh, while you're on the road uh, unless you're talking Walmart which put this uh, armrest down here <clears throat> unless you're talking Walmart which they don't always have everything you don't always want to be you know wearing Walmart clothes to uh, to a wedding necessarily uh, so yeah shopping uh, that's one thing. But even more so, if you need to get your pants hemmed, which most people do, uh, especially for dress slacks, <clears throat> man, that's, uh, that's a challenge. So I had to call around. I found a place in Boise that does uh, next day alterations. So I'm going to have to get in a little early, uh, get, the, you know, get to that alteration place and get them to, uh, to do that. Uh, and then hopefully I'll have the pants in time and everything will be good. So, uh, not to mention I need to get the, you know, the dress shirt, you know, just, uh, straight out of the package that needs to be, uh, pressed and all that stuff. Don't exactly have an iron and an ironing board in this thing, you know? Uh, so, you know, those are some challenges, but got that, got the tie, got some nice dress shoes and all that stuff. So I am, uh, other than getting the alterations done, I'm ready uh, and looking forward to it. Yay. All right, so uh, yeah, I don't want this to be too long uh, because I do got to get this uh, uploaded and all that stuff and hopefully out to you guys tonight. But I did want to read off a couple of messages uh, that I got or comments that I got with some really good questions that I would like to take some time and answer. Uh, really good questions, by the way. And uh, these questions, I didn't really want to put the, put it out there on you know in text because it would just, man, it would take a long time to really type and explain. So here we go. Uh, the first one is from Jay Cannon. Jay says, hey, JJ the trucker, uh, just came up with an idea. Next time you go through a weigh station, could you share what, with us what it's like for the scales? I know you hate them as much as I did when I was with my cousin, but it would be cool because in ATS, or American Truck Simulator, they make it look stupid easy. But sometimes it isn't always the case. So just a suggestion. All right, <clears throat> so... I would love to see one of those videos too. 
<laughs> you don't see them. Uh, and there's a reason for it. Uh, a couple of reasons, especially why you're probably not going to end up seeing one for me unless it's one of those after the facts. And that is, first of all, with the way stations, you don't get pulled into all the way stations. First of all, a lot of them are closed. You don't realize they're closed until you get right on up to them. Uh, so, you know, you can start filming and, you know, it's closed. Oh, well. Uh, next is we've got pre-pass. Pre-pass is something where you're going down the highway full speed, you know, uh, okay, prime speed, 65. Uh, so you're going full speed down the highway and you pass underneath a transponder that's in the, uh, the far right-hand lane. And while you're tra passing under that transponder that's reading your truck information, embedded into the highway itself are some scales and it takes a rough measurement of how much each of your axles weigh. If everything looks good and they don't need to see you or talk to you or you know check anything out, then about an eighth of a mile later, you pass under another transponder and it gives you an all clear signal saying, no need to come in, go ahead and bypass the scales, you're good. For me, that happens about, I'd say 80% of the time. About 80% of the time I get the bypass. So between them being closed most of the time and getting the bypass, I rarely get pulled in just for a second way. Now the second way, it is stupid easy. It really is. You pull in, this is most truck stops now, or most uh, way stations. Here's the thing, every single way station is a little different. Even within the same state, they can have two different way stations that are completely different. So I'm gonna give you uh, the idea of what the modern way station is like. Uh, you go in, you slow down to about 35-ish, uh, and it weighs you again, a little bit slower, a little bit more detailed. And then you watch the lights. You're gonna either be uh, told to go into the right lane or the left lane. Uh, one lane is, all right, you checked out on the second way. See you later, we don't wanna to talk to you. Get the heck out of here. Stop clogging up our lanes. <laughs> so you go on, uh, re-enter the highway, and that's it, you're done. Uh, no big deal, stupid easy. Uh, if you are given the other lane, they want to really weigh you uh, with the slow way. So then you pull up to the actual scales. Uh, most of them, you do it uh, at either five miles an hour or three miles an hour. Some of them, you actually stop each axle on the scale, you know, uh, and then you watch for the signs and the lights or whatever the, uh, the case may be at that particular uh, way station. And if you are good and they, you know, check your, your truck's records and everything and everything looks good, you're gonna get the green light and you're out of there. Back onto the highway, no big deal, stupid easy. Where it does not get stupid easy is if they want to bring you in for an inspection or if there's something wrong, if you're overweight or something like that. Uh, first of all, I never run overweight, uh, ever. I ran one overweight once, but there was an exemption, uh, an APU exemption I was able to use. It ended up being fine. Um, and all the way stations were closed along the entire route that time anyway. So, um, but uh, uh, anyway, oh, and it was like 300 pounds. I was 300 pounds overweight, big deal. Uh, so if they do pull you in, then you've got to get all your paperwork, you know, your, all your permits and all that stuff, bring it into the station. I guess sometimes they actually come out to you and then it's either a paperwork check or a full-on inspection where they have you come into the bay and actually inspect your vehicle. Um, the only thing I've ever, ever had is at the be very beginning of this year in Wyoming, uh, they were pulling every driver in to show the paperwork because they wanted to check uh, the IFTA registration. IFTA is the uh, International Fuel Tax Authority. Uh, to, just to make sure that we've registered, you, that's something you gotta register for every single year. Prime does that automatically for us. I love that they do that. I don't have to worry about any of that stuff because Prime takes care of it. And uh, and of course they had, you know, it was a, a piece of cake. I went in, They all they said was, just need to see your uh, IFTA registration and your driver's license. There you go, here you go. All right, thank you, have a nice day. Next, that was it. That's all I've ever been pulled in for. I've never been pulled in for an inspection. I've never been pulled in to check anything else ever. Uh, and that's, you know, through multiple trainers and their trucks, uh, through now two, you know, my first truck and now my second truck. Um, granted, it's only been a year, <laughs> a little bit over a year, 
but still, you know, I, I hear about people, you know, on YouTube that are getting pulled in multiple times a year, uh, asked to bring in paperwork, uh, a couple of inspections a year. The older your truck is, the more it's going to happen. No ifs, ands, or buts. They see a brand new truck, they're like, we're not going to find any problems with that thing. Go on. Uh, and then being under Prime's authority, Prime has a great record of making sure that all of their paperwork is in order, all the permits are done, they've got a permits department that is on top of it. Uh, so they know that we've got all of our permits already. They know that there's not going to be an issue. So they see, oh, Prime on the transponder, brand new truck, weighs okay, get out of here. Stop wasting our time. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So uh, that's why I would love to see one of those videos as well. Uh, if I ever do get pulled in, I will at least do an after, you know, an, uh, a recap on it. Uh, but I'm not going to film, you know, anything. If I if I get pulled in like that, I'm not going to be filming it because uh, I really want to be able to pay attention to what the officer is uh, asking me and directing me to do. I don't want to be fiddling with the camera and, hey, are you okay with me recording this? <laughs> Yeah, I uh, don't want to raise any red flags or anything like that, especially not for my first, you know, few. Uh, so that's why, even from other truckers, that's usually what you're going to get is after the fact. Hey, I got pulled into DOT. Here's what happened. And I'll do the same thing if that ever happens. All right. Whew, I know I labored on a lot about that one. All right, let's go to the next one. <clears throat> All right. The second question is from Hector. Uh, you may know Hector as Fly4K Videos if you read the comments. And uh, Hector says, JJ the Trucker, I'm trying to have all my bases covered for when I move outside of Miami. Uh, we are eyeing Jacksonville above Lake Okidokie. <laughs> it's supposed to be Lake Okeechobee, but yep, I call it uh, Lake Okidoki, and uh, Hector picked up on that. I appreciate that, Hector. Uh, so yeah, Prime is not hiring anybody below Lake Okidoki, but if you're above Lake Okidoki in Florida, They'll hire you. They'll definitely hire you. <clears throat> All right, so we're eyeballing, uh, we're eyeing Jacksonville. Uh, then finish the CDL in my state so I don't have to go through some extra processes for Prime. What do you think? I could use some pointers. All right. <clears throat> there's no extra processes going through Prime. In fact, there's extra processes if you don't go through Prime. So here's the thing. Prime will hire you whether you go through your own CDL course or if you take Prime CDL course. Doesn't matter as long as you pass and you've got a CDL and your you know everything else looks good. Uh, Prime will hire you, so there's no, no no issues about that. So if you are going to go to your own through your own CDL course, um, make sure you've got a good reason for it, such as extremely low price or you know your buddy runs it, so you're getting a great discount or free. Uh, you know something to you know something like that uh, because other than that if you've chosen prime then I don't see why you would want to go to a separate CDL school and here's why let's say you do go to a separate CDL school okay you're gonna spend two three four weeks whatever however long that course is you're gonna you're gonna spend that time there you're gonna get your CDL uh, you're gonna pass your CDL uh, then you're going to take that CDL certificate that you got, take it to your DMV, say, all right, now turn my permit into a CDL. They're going to say, thank you very much. Thank you for your money. We will mail your CDL out to you. All right, cool. Then you go to Prime. You go through Prime's orientation. I hear it's down to three days. That is awesome. And then they say, okay, well, here's the thing. Training is normally 50,000 miles, but since you didn't go through our CDL training, you haven't been on our trucks yet. You don't know our way of doing things. We don't know how good that training course was that you got because some of them are really good. Some of them are really bad. I've heard some nightmare stories about it as far as not learning anything. Uh, so <clears throat> apparently Prime has had some issues with that in the past. So what they say is instead of the 50,000 miles in TNT training, you need to do 60,000 miles. Okay, that's adding another two to two and a half, maybe three weeks onto your training. In addition to, you know, the TNT that you are, you know, the 50,000 that you already had to do, plus the time that you spent at the CDL class. <clears throat> so that's really a big extra step right there. 
it doesn't make sense for me, you know, for me to want to do that. In addition, you're paying out of pocket for that CDL class. <clears throat> Whether you stick with Prime or not, or wh wherever you go, you're paying out of pocket up front for that CDL class. <clears throat> That's it. Uh, if you go through Prime, okay, Prime will take care of training you for the CDL. You'll go through PSD training, you know, two to four weeks of PSD training. Uh, you come in, they handle the, uh, the, the testing right there on site. Uh, you pass your test. You, you don't even, well, you get a, a printed certificate, but it's also done electronically. At that point, you're good to drive. That is just as good as having a CDL. You are good to drive on your own, no problem. You will immediately go into the TNT training phase. And I think that extra step that you might be thinking about is having to go back to your home state to get your CDL, you know, turn that into your DMV and, and get your CDL. Thing is, during your TNT, you're going to have home time. Okay? You're not gonna run 50,000 miles straight without any home time. Your trainer's gonna have home time you're going to need home time anyway. Believe me, you're going to need some home time during that training. Uh, so when you go home, you, uh, well, after you get that certificate, uh, you've got like 60 or 90 days, you know, to get it to the DMV uh, before it before it's invalid. Uh, and even if it goes invalid, from what I understand, you just call Prime. Prime reissues another one, and it's not that big of a deal. So <clears throat> there's really no extra step. You go home. On your home time, you go to your DMV, you get that taken care of. They mail the CDL out to you, and that's it. You go back on the uh, the truck after uh, after your home time. You finish off your fifty thousand, not sixty thousand miles. Uh, as far as the payment uh, to Prime versus the CDL course, uh, again, CDL course, you're paying for it up front, out of your pocket. With Prime, you only pay for it if you don't stick with Prime for at least one year. That's it. If you stick with Prime for a year, that includes the TNT training, okay? Then you're good. You won't have to pay for it at all. Not a single penny will you have to pay for. And if for some reason you choose, to, you know, to not stick with Prime for whatever reason, either you don't care for Prime for whatever reason, uh, <laughs> or uh, or trucking's not for you, or anything like that, okay? Well, now you got to pay for the school. Uh, but again, you would have had to pay for it anyway. So keep that in mind. That's why, to me, it doesn't make sense to to do that extra step of going to a separate CDL course uh, and then have to do an extra 10,000 miles uh, with uh, with Prime. A couple of other things with the CDL course. Uh, during the CDL course, Prime advances you $200 a week onto your Com Data card. Uh, and you can use that money for food and and uh, and all that stuff. They ask you not to, you know, send it home and pay for bills for it, but it really doesn't matter. They don't keep track of that. Uh, and then once you are hired on by Prime, uh, aka once you pass the CDL test, <clears throat> they will take that uh, those two hundred dollars out of your pay, twenty five dollars a week. So you've got a long time to pay that off. Uh, for me, uh, I paid it off real fast <laughs> you know I, I paid it off while I was in TNT training so it wasn't that big of a deal so anyways th that's my thought on it that's my uh, my two cents and uh, I hope that answers your question Hector uh, and for anybody else that uh, may have been wondering that as well all right all right I think I will wrap it up uh, you guys know what to do if you haven't subscribed already why not why not I see 75% of my video watches are from non subscribers I can't believe that. So do me a favor, click on my face right there. Right in the middle, right in the middle, boom, click on my face, right there, click on it. You'll be offered the opportunity to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss a single one of my videos. It's awesome. Click that bell too, that bell notification, so you can really be notified when my next videos are coming, uh, when my next video comes out. And uh, hey, while you're at it, if you're not sure if you wanna subscribe, right about there, yep, <clears throat> check that video out right there. That's. I haven't selected that video. I don't know which video that's going to be. I know it's going to be from my channel. YouTube is selecting that video for you, whichever video it thinks you're going to like the best. So go ahead and check it out. See what you think. If you like my channel, please subscribe. I appreciate it. And as always, comment down below. I love the comments. I try and answer every single one of them, especially the questions. All right. Talk to you guys in a few days. Bye-bye.